Sure. Awesome. Well, welcome everybody to tonight's team huddle. Um, before I introduce Sheila, I wanted to tell you guys about a couple really fun things that are coming up. One being that we are going to be having a team wide holiday Zoom party on Monday, December 19th. So come in your best holiday gear because one person's going to win just for that. And we're going to have games, we're going to have trivia, we're going to do all kinds of fun stuff. And there is going to be tons and tons of fun giveaways during that night because I wish that I could be Santa and make it to every single person's house on our team, but the reality is I can't. So instead, I'm just gonna throw gifts and we're gonna have lots of fun and we're gonna all join each other. So you can bring a cafe that night or a peppermint mocha or a fancy drink or champagne, whatever you want, you bring that night. We're gonna enjoy some time together. I would personally probably put down that we'll be on there for 45 minutes to an hour that night, but I promise you it will be so much fun. And then we have something really special that you can invite guests to. On Monday, December 26th, we will not have a team huddle. We'll do it on Tuesday, December 27th, and it will be a vision board training. So it'll be a whole hour. We're gonna go through vision boards, how to do them. We're gonna walk through a visualization. It's gonna be amazing about goals, vision. So not only are you going to benefit from it, but I'm hoping that you guys will invite guests. And so starting at the very first team huddle next week of December, we're going to spend five minutes on every team huddle learning and talking about how to invite to that event so that people can see the community and the awesome people that are on this team. And like, why would you not want to join this team after you saw that, right? And we go right into uh, the new year. So the vision board training is Tuesday, December 27th. You'll see all these things on our team page, but I just want to give you guys a heads up. And then last, but definitely not least, we're doing the 12 days of giving again inside the customer group, Do You Thrive? So if you're part of that customer group and you're engaged in there, and if you're not, you want to get in there and start engaging in there because starting December 1st, we're going to have 12 days of giving. We're going to have different contests every single day for our people in there as a way to thank them for being part of that amazing community. And they'll be getting things like Boost, $25 Amazon gift card, DFTs, plus line packages, charcoal masks, like, all, like so cool. And they'll learn about lots of different plus line products during those 12 ways, 12 days as well. So tonight, I'm so excited to share with you guys our special guest, Sheila Fazzoni. Not only is she one of the top producers in the company, she's also uh, part of our upline. And what I love about Sheila is that she's always available whenever I need her. She is still in the business. She, I, I don't really love using the word grind anymore because it sounds like something you wouldn't want to do, but she's always in her business, right? She's always working her business. She's still doing her 54321. She's still showing up at the retreat. She's still showing up at training. She's flying to see her team. And I really appreciate that, Sheila, because I know that after being in business this long and having the huge success that you've had, you really can put your feet up and you choose not to. So I really appreciate that and love that. And when I heard you share these eight tips to close the sale on one of our trainings like a month or two ago, I knew our team needed to hear it specifically from you with some great examples because I thought it was fabulous and amazing. So I'm going to mute out, let you take control. And thank you so much for being on here with us tonight. Well, thank you for that kind introduction, Blair. Um, super happy to be here tonight, you guys. Um, this subject kind of came about, it was something I was, you know, I'm always kind of uh, easygoing when it comes to a topic, because if it's not something that I typically speak about or that really, really originally hit home with me, I'm ready to dive in and you know, share whatever I have going on as far as closing the sale and questions you ask. And, you know, it's super important, um, you guys, uh, that you are asking questions because as um, it's scary, right? It's scary to ask the questions, but I'm telling you, um, if you don't ask the questions, it's actually kind of awkward. And, and that is, um, why I'm here. I'm here to change your mindset on asking the questions so it doesn't feel awkward and make it a smooth transition for you. So, um, you know, what? I'm just going to hop right into this, you guys, tonight, because this is um, you may have questions and I'll do my best. I'm super uh, get super sidetracked very easily, but maybe I'll go through the first question and see if there's any questions so that we can kind of go through them, because I know I, I think I have plenty of time as far as what I, the content I have, you guys. So, so when you're asking questions, I have eight questions that I really thought were important. Um, this isn't just necessarily uh, an end of conversation question. This isn't just after, you know, 
there, there's several questions that go along the process. So, and it may not always be you, your upline leadership may be asking the questions of people when they're on a three-way call or a three-way chat, um, or it may be something you want to do as soon as you um, are, you know, hanging up the phone after those conversations. So when I'm reaching out, one of my number one common questions I do ask people is when you're considering Thrive, would you like help with any of the following? And then I re list, you know, the benefits of Thrive, increased energy, weight management. You guys all know, but I'm going to go through them anyway. Help and better sleep, improve focus, improve mood, help with aches and discomforts, improve workouts and recovery. Let's, the reason why I do this is when I started um, back nine years ago, it was like Thrive was kind of a a voodoo like they're like is this stuff real like what is in this you know is this legal like we had we didn't have the validation we have now right well so often now people also think it's just a weight loss product because they've seen so many transformations and a lot of times we even post those before and after pictures to show the transformation and it's not even really about the weight loss right it's about the, the person's mood, their setting, like how they look, like it's just, it does change how we feel, which in turn changes the way we look, whether it's weight loss, whether it's weight gain, whether it's healthier skin, healthier hair, healthier, whatever. So I always like to pose those questions to people. So this way you're stating your intentions to them and you can uncover their goals of that person. And I think that's super important too. You want to know what, what are they what are their ultimate goals? Why do they want to thrive? And so you also prove to them your goal is to help them, help them win. You're going to win their trust. Then when you win people's trust, you're going to continue to help more and more people thrive because you're trustworthy and they just feel that vibe from you. So what I like to do, and I, I really, um, I, I was preparing for a different Zoom today and I was they said, you know, what are you doing right now that really has, um, you know, got you um, ranked high on the leaderboard? Um, you're consistently billing, like what are those things? So I kind of did the four R's. So I'm going to add that just briefly in to our eight questions. And that's reaching out, relating, recommend, and repeat. Okay. So we have to reach out first initially to these people. So now um, after you ask that question, you're going to relate, you're going to cater your response to their response, right? So say they said weight loss, you can send them transformation photos. Um, you can, uh, maybe it relates to your story. Maybe that was part of your journey. Um, say they say aches and discomforts, you know, you're going to relate to them. Like for me, Scott and I both had aches and discomforts before we started this product. So I would share my story. I'd relate to them and then always end that conversation with a question. And questions might be like, how much weight are you trying to lose? Or are your, you know, aches and discomforts all the time? Or is it during certain times of the day? And then we're going to recommend the three simple steps. And we're going to recommend, you know, maybe we recommend um, the the full pack of the 60 day challenge. Maybe you're recommending the half pack, depending on what the situation, financial situation is, right? But you are making a recommendation off of all the information that you gathered. So, and, and those responses, ask another question. What happens if you don't is there's this dead, can be this dead silence and you're like, oh gosh, they're ghosting me. Well, maybe they just really don't know what to say. Maybe the whole conversation just got awkward because of, you know, the way it was ended. Ask a question, you know, relate to that question and then recommend products. Okay. So the second question, you guys, okay, I should probably see, I don't see anything yet. I'll kind of run through this and then you can ask any questions at the end and I'll kind of throw it back. Um, one of the questions I have is, does it make sense to, and this can apply to many different things. Um, does it make sense for you to create a free account, give them your referral link and get an order place for say the half pack of the E60 Thrive Challenge? Okay, that's a great response. You know, when once you've developed what their goals are and you've, you've related to them, you're making recommendations. So now ask them, does it make sense to create that free account and get that order placed? What you're doing is you're letting them tell you kind of now what's next for them, right? Which is which is good. You've made your recommendation. Now ask if it makes sense to place the order. 
If you don't, guess what? Now you've just left a question and it's kind of open-ended and maybe they give you a response. You got to do it. So you, it's constant repetition, guys, repetition. You're going you're gonna to reach out. You're going to relate. You're going to recommend. And you're going to repeat that process because it's an ongoing process. So um, if you're, the next question is, if you're ready to place an order, I can help you do so today and take advantage of the following promo. This is when corporate had, so say this weekend, the free shipping, um, you know, you're throwing it out there. Hey, if you're ready to place your order, can I help you? I can help you do so by taking advantage of the free shipping promo that the company has on that ends tonight at 10.59 p.m. Central Standard Time. Here's the thing. It's always always good to create urgency. So anytime, whether it's you're giving them credits off, uh, maybe you're giving sample packs to two of um, their potentials to help them thrive for free, whatever it might be, you want to give an end date. And I can't, ex I can't stress this more um, because anytime you're offering a discount, you put that deadline on, only offer it, say, maybe one to three days. And then um, you can always extend it if you want to. So I always say put a lesser time frame on it. Like even when we have promos, I'd say, hey, you know, you know, company's offering this. Um, are you ready to get your order placed? Like then if they, it goes to me or whatever, and then I say, hey, you know, this offer does end on whatever, whatever. This is after you've built some rapport with them too, because as you get to know people, you're relating and you're recommending you're building that that relationship and that confidence in you so then it's when there are promos and if they haven't ordered you can throw that out to them because you're built you've built a foundation um not that you can't if you haven't but it doesn't feel as icky to yourself and it doesn't feel awkward so um you know, you, you can let people know, hey, people don't want to miss out on a good deal. You don't want them to miss out on that good deal either. So keep that in mind with that number three question. So number four, um, is there any reason if you could get started driving today for $160, you wouldn't want to order? And what I like about this question, if they say no, you've got them to agree to an order. There's no, they, they, there isn't any reason why they don't want to order. And okay, great. Here's what I recommend and go through that order and how to place it with them. Right. But if they say yes, you can address their, their objection without blowing the sale. Right. Here's the thing. You connect them with your upline leadership to get that resolution of whatever the objection is. Objections are a good thing, guys. And I'm going to address that a little bit later. Um, but they're a good thing. So number five, Unless you have more questions or concerns, I think you're ready to get thriving. Which option works best for you, a customer or a promoter? What I like about this is the statement, the state, this statement and the question leaves the door open for your potential thriver to get more information while also giving them that push to order. Okay, here are your options. Which one works best for you? And you know what? You've given them, you know, your the the benefits of each and now let them make that decision. We all know we that, you know, it's great. Our customers make our best promoters, but I've had promoters come in out of the gate that were confident and would Kim Collins was one of them. She was confident. She came in, she said, Hey, you know what? I'm starting, I'm doing this. Let's do this together and compare notes. And she was confident doing that. And guess what? She hit all those bonuses because of her confidence level and the, the relationship she had with those people and in her warm market and she wasn't afraid. And, and so people do have success out of the gate as well as a promoter. So keep that in mind. So here's the thing, if you did a good job at communicating, you know, it thrives benefits and the value as well as overcoming those objections, that potential thriver will give you that final go ahead. Let's get that order placed, right? Um, but as I was saying, objections are a part of sharing, you guys. You're going to have objections. And actually, I welcome those over a ghosting any day of the week. So um, so if you don't know what your Thrivers project uh, objections are, guess what? You can't ever overcome them and they'll never order. So you want to know what's holding them back. So keep in mind, all these questions you know, like I said, aren't necessarily just asked by you. They can be asked by your leadership as you put them on that three-way chat or in that three on that three-way phone call. Um, but it's super important as you're connecting with people that you are asking questions. So um, you guys, this is one of my favorite questions. And it's as you've built this relationship, are you ready to thrive with me yet? And um, 
you know, what, what's that doing that question is keeping it short and sweet, right? Like, um, you're also asking that they're ready and also assuming at some point that they will thrive with you. <laughs> and I, I assume that a lot. Like, I mean, I, I met some people on an airplane ride down to, uh, Fort Myers on our way to our Naples house. And, um, you know, I got the, I'm connected with them on Facebook. I know they're going to thrive with me. We had a lot of good conversations. We built a relationship. I sat on that plane and talked to these two individuals who weren't related either. They were each flying separately individually. And my husband sits across the aisle from me because he's claustrophobic. So we each sit on the aisle and I built a relationship over three hours with them and got connected with them because as you're building relationships, now it's my responsibility to continue to follow up with them, feed them information and ask the questions that eventually lead to the sale, right? Uh, to them thriving. And people want to say, oh, I'm not a salesperson. No, but we're sharing. And when ultimately when you're sharing, you're selling, you are. And, and so you got to take, um, let's put it this way. You got to take the bull by the horns and lead that conversation because it's not your customer's responsibility to lead that conversation. Oh, man. Sorry, I'm super... Okay. Hold on. I'm trying to fix it. Nope, that's fine. Joni, that's fine. can you mute yourself? I can't even find her on here to mute her. Sorry. Okay, keep going. No, Maybe. that's okay. That's okay. Um, so, all right, let's go with number seven. Um, I like this question too, because I think it breaks it down in a way that actually makes sense to people. Are you willing to invest $6 a day this month to help you achieve your goals? If I can help you earn it for free next month. All right, let's talk about this. You've you've gone through their goals with them, right? You you did that. You went through, you mastered those goals with them. You know what it is. So let's not hang on, you guys, just one second. I'm kind of messing up my um, so you've gone through those goals, you've gone through the, all that information with them. So now you're saying, if you are you ready to invest six dollars a day for for this next month if I help you get it for free. So the closing statement truly paints a picture that $160 plus tax and shipping is $6 a day. So think about this, how many people stop at Starbucks or Caribou or Dunkin' and get themselves a coffee that costs them five, six, seven dollars every single day or even multiple times a week. And I know several people like that. They don't even think twice about it. But if you ask them about that thrive, they'd probably say that it's, you know, too expensive. But yet, so paint the picture of what $6 a day is, you know, my husband before us, uh, we started thriving, he stopped every day on his morning ride to work and got a soda and a muffin, you know, there's six bucks, you know, like six bucks we, we really throw that away every single day without even thinking about it. But when it's in a lump sum, people just need to process a little bit differently. So anyway, I love this question. Um, so, so $6 a day is very little to invest in your health to make you feel amazing, especially when you can earn it for free next month. So it's our job to paint that picture of Thrive's value and benefits. We already painted, you know, we asked that initial question. So we know what their goals are. So now let's paint that value and benefits to them. You got to paint that picture. Super crucial if you want to grow your organization. And guess what? As I said, you are going to have to do that reach out. You're going to have to relate to them. You're going to have to recommend and you're going to have to repeat. So your follow-up is your, your fortune is in your follow-up. Um, and that's where these questions are going to keep you rolling with your potential thrivers. So uh, number eight. Um, I know you're feeling amazing and loving your thrive. Who are two friends you could help feel amazing too? Here's the thing. You're planting that seed that, you know what, this is it. Who can we help? Um, so you also have to paint the picture for your customers. And I hear so often, I think um, more than anything, my customers are just happy buying their thrive. Sure, maybe this month they are, but you should they should know that it is an option for them to get it for free, right? Plant that seed. And next month, maybe their husband loses their job. And the only thing that's getting them out of bed in the morning and helping them get their butt to work is their thrive. We want them to be able to continue to thrive. And people who are thriving for free, guess what? 
They're not going to stop thriving with you because they're getting it for free. And they also are starting to build their own community of people who feel amazing and thrive with you. So you got to continue to paint that picture for not just your promoters, but for your customers, your regular auto ship customers. And, um, I, I don't know, maybe this is something I should bite my tongue on, but I'm really not going to, cause that's not my nature, but, um, Thrive Elite has done amazing things for people and it's super hard to earn you guys, you know, when you have those auto ship customers, but the problem, what I hear from, from leaders all the time is they don't want to flip them because they don't want to lose that 800 extra $800. But I'm going to tell you right now, you get a promoter who loves their product and is willing to share on your team. That $800 is nothing a month of what you can make when you help someone else you know, enjoy the financial benefits of sharing the Thrive experience. It's nothing. And you can get yourself another auto ship customer. So you need to paint those seeds, plant those seeds, and you need to, that's how you grow your organization. That's how you continue to grow. So if you're holding back on those customers by not sharing the fact that they can, well, refer to and get their product free, but also that there is an income opportunity available. And that can easily happen by connecting them to your upline leadership and they can communicate that you're missing in the boat you're missing the big picture because the big picture is growing an organization of amazing people who are sharing the thrive experience and what this amazing product has done for them so don't miss the boat on that i'm telling you planting seeds planting seeds and um, continuing to water it is how you're going to grow your organization you found this product you love it you can continue to grow that organization simply by opening your mouth listening to people's concerns whether it be an objection or it be a financial, you know, maybe they're having financial issues. Our economy really stinks right now. And, and what I am finding in my cold market, like reaching out to cold market people, um, is that there's a lot of changes and people want another stream of income, whether it be, you know, a second stream, a third stream or whatever, they want a side gig because there's so much you know, instability within our country and within our, you know, gosh, you go to the grocery store, you know, the cost of um, items. And I know for me, like I donated turkeys to a local elementary school because they know they, their biggest fundraiser of the year simply was 12 turkeys donated to the the school and they did turkey bingo, right? So 400 families were coming. They found out on a Monday, they weren't getting their donations. And the, this was scheduled for Thursday. And people want to go have fun with their family at a low price, right? And earn themselves a turkey for Thanksgiving. And, um, you know, I, I never thought how, first of all, like I did it because, um, those kids should have turkeys so they can have their bingo. And I, so I did it for one reason. And then she's like, she like, send me your information. And this is totally off topic, but I'm just a tip. Um, send me your, you know, information about your business and we'll put you up on the big screen. I'll give you a shout out and, you know, we'll, we'll shout out your business. And I'm like, like, I go, well, first of all, I was doing this just because like, I don't need a shout out. She's like, Sheila, you may as well throw your business up there. And it's dumb. Honestly, it's dumb business for me not to, right? I mean, they're thankful they got the turkeys and I'm, I'm happy they got the turkeys. So heck, throw it up there. So, you know, think about those donations this time of year, not just I mean, one out of the kindness of your heart, but also these things can be business write-off. I didn't even think about it from that point of view. And guys, I've done many donations as a business write-off in the past, but there are lots of different things going around in your area where you can do donations and it doesn't have to be a big financial burden. I mean, I donated three turkeys. It was a hundred bucks. Like, I mean, it, or I they don't donate a hundred bucks thinking that would probably be three turkeys. Maybe they'll get four out of it. Um, but that was just cuz cuz they had a couple other people donating and and look at what it turned into. So anyway, um 
I guess we can run over to, do you want to shout some questions out, Blair, or we can go through some of the questions? That's kind of my eight questions. Yeah, I have to say nobody really put any questions okay. in there, but do you guys, um, you know, we've got a couple minutes, so utilize Sheila being on here. If you guys have any questions about this subject or like maybe you're getting hung up on how to get to that next question, this is the time to ask. So, I'll ask oh, good. Go ahead, Carl. So you talk about the necessity to reach out to people. What would you say are your favorite triggers to decide I'm going to reach out to that person? You know, honestly, a need. I mean, I think um, it, it's different probably. Um, you mean on social media? Is that where you're coming from or from? Like, I guess that's what I was thinking. Yes. Okay. So like on social media, I think building, uh, if it's a cold market, um, it's basically building a relationship, whether you go into, I think everybody needs to, if you have exhausted, and first of all, I don't ever think you've exhausted your warm market, but if you feel like you have, and you feel like you want to network more, and I never, I always think it's good. That's part of our five, four, three, two, one. We need to be networking all the time. Um, but I think find things that you have in common with them. I think it's the easiest way to make a connection and be authentic is like, for me, um, I'm in a Papillon group. You guys, I have a little Papillon. He's right behind me sleeping um, with the Chihuahua. I mean, these are these are animals that are like my children. Like, what better way to to you know build a relationship with someone than about the love of our dogs, right? Find a group. It could be um, you know uh, what are some other groups? You know, it can be anything. Um, maybe you have a love of cooking. Maybe you have a love of knitting. Maybe you have a love of automobiles. Like making that connection with people, and then um, eventually seeing the need. People will sit on social media and they'll complain about their, you know, the fact they have their head hurts. They um, are on their fifth Red Bull for the day. Like, I mean, people will say stuff that you're like, oh my gosh, like I can help you. And that's when I take advantage of those opportunities for sure. Now, as far as my war market, I work, reach out to everyone, everyone several times um, because I knew I had a product that my family and friends would benefit from. And um, and, and neighbors and whatever. And my goal was always to be the one to help them start thriving because I never wanted to be at the grocery store or go down to my mailbox and see a neighbor or a friend thriving with a DFT on. And it didn't come from me because I didn't open my mouth. And that's truly how I feel. I feel like, I, you know, it was my, once I found the passion and the love of the product, it was my responsibility to, make sure people knew I was the thriver and to personally reach out to him and said, Hey, you know what? I know you are a teacher and there's nobody who needs thrive more than those teachers. So that energy, they can drain you. And, um, you know, relating to maybe their profession, um, you know, the aches and discomforts, um, Clearly, we aren't going to approach someone with weight management if unless they approach us. But the beauty of weight management is they're all going to once Thrive Elite, um, you know, is is out there. And that's a great way, right? Actually, that's one of the things I was talking about earlier on a different Zoom. Thrive Elite, you know, get having people join your VIP list. Say, hey, this is coming out. You know, who wants to join my VIP list? It's a little harder to do privately, but you could do a group uh, text, um, like a letter, like a, you know, your newsletter, uh, not a text, sorry, an email, an email newsletter and let people know this coming out who wants to be on my VIP list. This gives you instant contacts. And it also gives you ways to prep people for um, Thrive Elite simply by keeping them informed, letting them know the detox is available, you know, that, you know, this is a great way to lead into Thrive Elite and maybe even get them on the Thrive experience prior to that. But for sure, getting that free account set up because those of us that have been veterans and those of you who are uh, talking to people as you're talking to people you're adding them to that free network and your cloud is a database for you to be taking major advantage of especially during these times and there's no better way to do it than hop on that app and send out messages where you can see if people opened them i'm not i'm not a guru on the app yet that is one of my to do's to really get so confident that i can share everything I know. Uh, I'm not there yet, but I'm telling you, play around with that because it's a great resource, especially when you have 
um, you know, can pull some of the information out of your database. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, Sheila, there is a question in the chat that said, do you have a go-to statement when potential customer replies, it's not in my budget? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, you know, I, I think simply, what is your budget? Like, what would work for you? Because, you know, we need to recommend, you if you make the recommendation of that hat pack, but it's not in their budget, what, based off what their goals are, we can customize something that may maybe is a little bit more in their budget. And that also, if you kind of know where that budget is, you also, when there's promos happening, that's a great time to reach out to those people who just is not in their budget right now. Honestly, I feel like a lot of people have um, issues with, uh, you know, we'll make that excuse because you don't know how much money is in their bank account. I mean, they, if they say it's not, they can't afford it right now, who are we to argue? But you can say, what would what, what fits in your budget? What could I help you with to help you start feeling better today? And we can get you thriving for free down the road. Yeah. So good. And there's lots of things you can say to, you know, play around with. You got to find what works for you. But I like mm -hmm. going back to what you said about the six dollars a day. I always say that. I'm like, what are you spending six dollars a day on right now that's not serving you? Right, or right. not helping you meet your goals. So I love it, like really goes back to that question that you shared. Um, Ashley, you had a question? Feel free to unmute. Uh oh, Ashley, are you frozen? Oh man, she had a question too. She looks like she's frozen because she's not moving. Yeah. Maybe she'll hop back on. Anybody else have a question? Ashley, oh, I think I froze at the right time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I wanted to give a quick shout out to Jennifer Bilbrey. Sorry, Jennifer, but she's been on our. Oh, no. Can you hear her? Mm -mm. Me either. Ashley, we can't hear you. Can you put it in the chat? Maybe just type it in the chat. I think you're going to shout somebody out and then maybe you had also had a question. So just put it in the chat. All right, I'll try this over time. So shout okay. out for Jennifer um, for making it to the Zoom tonight. And Sheila, you mentioned this a little bit, but I was wondering if you could dig deeper for someone like Jennifer that's been on our team a little less than a week um, of talking about the business. Um, she's halfway to VIP and she's trying to find a promoter. So what advice would you give uh, for someone that that is so new into the business of trying to close the sale with a potential promoter? You know, I, I like what Kim Collins used to do, especially with promoters. It's like, you know what? Hey, I'm I'm doing this, like all the things um, with I'm thriving. I'm loving this product. There's also, you know, a business opportunity. Let's do this together and compare notes. Like I always think of your get out of jail list, especially during those first two weeks. That's the biggest struggle to um, like, who would you call to help uh, bail you out? You know, um, who are those people that those, the friends, the family members that you can say, you know what, I'm doing this, let's do this together and um, paint that picture. But honestly, um, I think getting the interest in Thrive first, then connect them to Ashley. Let Ashley do the talking and say, you know what, here's the thing, here's, you have the opportunity as a customer, here's an opportunity as a promoter, here are the differences, what works best for you, because Ashley's been doing this longer, she can, she can um, steer them in that direction better, but reach out to those people that are, um, you know, there for you, which I call, maybe I need a better list name than get out of jail, but I don't know, that's my biggest fear in life, just so you all know, there's a, there's a, um, a little tip about me is going to jail, like, I don't want to go to jail, like, I just don't feel like I would fit in there. <laughs> so. I think any of us would. That's hilarious. Awesome. Thank you, and Thank you, Ashley. Uh, thanks so much, Sheila, for being on tonight. We're so thankful for you and for all of you guys on. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your week. And I'll have this recording up tonight along with the typed out of the eight different questions that Sheila went over tonight. So thanks, Sheila. Bye, awesome. guys. Thank you so much for having me. Bye, guys. Great to see all the faces.